Hello everyone and welcome to Reading with Mrs. Adams. I'm Mrs. Adams and today I am so excited. The butterfly video is finally here. I have three stories and two poems all about butterflies and I'm going to share with you the video diary that I took watching caterpillars grow and turn into butterflies. Earlier this spring I purchased some caterpillars and I watched them grow and I took little uh, videos every day, that's the video diary, of how they grow. So you're going to get to watch that with me. I also have some exciting news. This will really be beneficial to moms and dads as well because I have a website, readingwithmrsadams.com. And if you go to my website, you're going to be able to find um, activities related to each of the videos. Um, eventually all of the videos that I've shot, but I started with growing a garden and then I have some extended activities for uh, that go with the ladybug video and also activities that will go with this video. So you're going to find all kinds of fun activities all to help you become more proficient readers or even to learn how to read. So uh, let's get started today uh, with that video diary about how butterflies grow. Look what I got in the mail today. It's caterpillars. These are painted lady caterpillars and the kit came in the mail today. I'm so excited. And look, let's see if I can get a really good focused shot. There's actually seven painted lady caterpillars in here. Oh, there's that's in focus just right there. Yes. Seven painted lady caterpillars, the kind of goldish uh, or tan colored stuff at the bottom of this plastic jar is their food. And what these caterpillars will do is they will eat the food. Now they're actually much bigger than they yeah, they've grown quite a bit. They're probably maybe a week old already, these caterpillars. Um, they probably started out <clears throat> about, oh, I'm going to say uh, when they hatched, they were very small, very teeny tiny, maybe three millimeters in length. Um, at the most, maybe, yeah, and then they, they grow quite, quite rapidly, actually, and they feed, you can see there's one, two, three, four, and then over here, five, six, seven. So there are seven, and you see some little black, um, teeny tiny black dots, I think, in the bottom, and that's the waste of the from after eating the caterpillars, they just eat the kind of yellowish, tannish, gold colored food. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure it's a combination of pollen and um, nectar. And they feed it to the caterpillars. And then what the caterpillars, what, what they have been doing is they have been molting. So they grow too big for their skin. The skin splits and they actually slough it off. So it's like when you take um, your pants off and you scrunch them up at your ankles. That's kind of what their skin, the dead skin is. It gets too tight, too small for them. So they molt out of it. And then what they'll do, and they're already kind of practicing, they'll turn, they'll, they'll, they start spinning. So you can kind of see they've got some little silk threads that their molted skin is attached to. Mm -hmm. And they will eventually, when they're ready to molt the final time, and that's when they are encased in the chrysalises, they'll move up to the top of the jar. So I'm going to kind of go up here and I uh, can't really do it that way, but you can see at the top of the jar, there's some cloth up there and they will attach. They'll spin, 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 spin. 
um, and they'll attach themselves to the cloth on the underside of the lid and they will then they are just they're really busy today they will form a J with their body and then the last time they'll molt and the chrysalis will form and they'll be in the chrysalis for five to seven days and then they will emerge as butterflies and then I'll let them go in my garden but before that I will definitely put them in a butterfly habitat that I have and we can watch them and um, also in this this kit I was also given this um, feeder kit so it's this kit is called caterpillar to butterfly kit and so you'll see what that's what a painted lady butterfly looks like uh, when it emerges from the chrysalis so you see the little black butter little black caterpillars and then eventually it will change and so in this kit is actually a little safety pin so I can pin the um, the fabric with all of the chrysalises attached I'll be able to pin that to the side of the screen of my butterfly habitat and the butterfly food is just water and sugar uh, that you pour over cotton balls and the butterflies will be able to sit on the edge of this little feeder dish. You can see there's a dish inside the little plastic wrap with some sugar packets. And there's a little, uh, little like, like a dropper I'll fill with water and every day moisten the cotton balls and the butterflies will be able to feed after they've emerged. So right now they're very busy just feeding on the food at the bottom of their little plastic jar. And there's teeny tiny air holes at the top you can see. So they're gonna do just fine and we'll get to see them. I'll show you how they grow. I'll be filming these every day or so every other day, but I was just so excited that they came today. And we'll see how they, how they grow and the life cycle then of the butterflies that we're gonna be talking about. Great, so stay tuned and you'll see more. Love you guys. This is just an amazing, butterflies are, are such amazing animal creation of God and I just love them. So these little caterpillars are doing great and we'll get to watch them grow. I'm excited. You guys be blessed. I love you. So that's just a little clip from the very first day that I received those caterpillars in the mail and I was very excited. And throughout this video, I'll be sharing more clips of my video diary about how butterflies grow. The first story I have for you today, boys and girls, is called Waiting for Wings, and this is written and illustrated by Lois Ellert. She's the author, she wrote the words, and she's the illustrator. And the thing that's really wonderful about this story is that it's fiction, but it has lots and lots of nonfiction or factual information, informational text as well, throughout the whole story. And you're going to get to see how four different types of butterflies grow. Also, one thing that Lois Ellert does that I love when illustrators do this is she used both the front and the back cover of the book to create her book cover. And I just love that when illustrators do that. So let's get started reading Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert. Waiting for Wings by Lois Ellert, Scholastic Incorporated. Out in the fields, eggs are hidden from view.
clinging to leaves with butterfly glue. Soon caterpillars hatch. They creep and chew. Each one knows what it must do. Find a place where winds don't blow. Then make a case in which to grow. Caterpillar changes now begin. Body and wings take shape within. When it's time, each case is torn. Wings unfold, new butterflies are born. They pump their wings, get ready to fly. Then hungry butterflies head for the sky, looking for flowers with nectar to eat. They catch a whiff of something sweet. They follow that fragrant scent of perfume until they find our garden in bloom. We've been waiting for wings. We watch them circle, land on their feet, unroll their tongues and begin to eat. They dip and sip, then fly away back home to the fields. They have eggs to lay. And there are four different kinds of butterflies featured in this book. And the first is a buckeye. So buckeye caterpillar food includes plantain leaves. A plantain is a type of banana. And buckeye overwings. So there's four of their overwings. And buckeye underwings. You can see what the backside or the underside of the wings look like for the buckeye butterfly. This is a buckeye butterfly chrysalis, and this is what the buckeye caterpillar looks like. The second type of butterfly featured in this book is a painted lady. And the painted lady is a type of caterpillar that I raised and saw, and we we're going to see them turn into butterflies. So it's the painted lady. These are their over wings. Um, this is what a painted lady caterpillar looks like. It's just kind of plain brown. Actually, it looks more black than brown, but whatever. And then the painted lady caterpillar food is um, thistle leaves. And the painted lady chrysalis looks like this. It um, blends into the surrounding pretty well if it's, when it's laid on the underside of the thistle leaves. And this is a painted lady's underwings. They're just really very plain compared to their outer wings. And then this is a monarch butterfly right here. And these are the underwings of a monarch butterfly. These are the outer wings or the overwings of the monarch butterfly. This is what a monarch butterfly caterpillar looks like. This is the chrysalis and monarch caterpillar um, food includes milkweed leaves right here. And this is the tiger swallowtail butterfly. That's the fourth and final one. And these are the underwings, the tiger uh, swallowtail butterfly caterpillar looks just like this. And the overwings, they're very beautiful. 
and this is the chrysalis and the tiger swallowtail caterpillar food includes cherry leaves <laughs> that's what those are cherry leaves but these are the the four types of butterflies the buckeye the painted lady the monarch butterfly and the tiger swallowtail butterfly so and i think um, lois ellard has drawn them um, not to their actual size but to scale and that means that probably the smallest butterfly would be the painted lady and then next the buckeye and then after that the monarch butterfly and the largest of them would be the swallowtail and butterfly information so this picture here is a monarch butterfly feeding on an indian blanket flower and so that's these are the four wings these are the hind wings and this as you can see is the um, the underside of their wings and when butterflies are resting on a flower they usually will fold their wings up like this um, as I've mentioned before all insects have three body parts and butterflies are insects they have the head right here and they have an the thorax which is the middle part right here and the abdomen which is this the biggest part on the butterfly and of course they have six legs um, you can only see four of them I'm not sure uh, where the other two are but um, this is the butterfly's eye these are the two antennae and this is the proboscis or proboscis just depending on how you want to pronounce it it's correct to pronounce it both ways uh, anyway so what is a butterfly butterflies are insects insects have six legs although some butterflies like the monarch above have underdeveloped four legs oh so you can't see them that's why she hasn't drawn them and they have three sections to their bodies the head the thorax and the abdomen a butterfly's four wings as well as its legs are attached to its thorax moths look similar to butterflies but they are different in most cases butterflies have antennae with knobby tips unlike moths which have feathered antennae butterflies usually fly during the day moths mostly fly at night when butterflies rest they hold their wings above their backs moths fold their wings flat over their bodies how does a butterfly begin its life a butterfly begins its life as an egg laid by a female butterfly when the egg hatches a caterpillar emerges the caterpillar spends most of its short life eating but at a certain point it stops attaches itself to a leaf or branch and begins forming a protective case called a chrysalis around itself inside the chrysalis the caterpillar develops into a butterfly after a period of time the case splits open and the butterfly emerges most butterflies feed on nectar the sweet liquid secreted by flowers a butterfly drinks the nectar through its proboscis a linked pair of hollow tongue-like tubes the proboscis remains coiled up until the butterfly lands on a flower then the butterfly straightens out its proboscis until it resembles a pair of straws and drinks the flower's nectar so flower identification these are the different types of flowers that butterflies are attracted to some of the different types of flowers that butterflies are attracted to and the ones that Lois Ellert chose to illustrate in her book. This is a hollyhock, impatient, butterfly bush, zinnia. This is an Indian blanket flower or gallardia. This is a purple corn flower or echinacea, a sweet william, a cosmos, Phlox, that's a butterfly weed. Lantana, marigold. 
This is a flowering tobacco or nicotiana. Verbena, it's a pentis. And this is a black eyed Susan. Growing a butterfly garden. If you want to plant your own butterfly garden, start early before the growing season begins. Find out which butterflies live in your area and which nectar rich flowers will entice those butterflies to visit your garden. Generally, butterflies are attracted to flowers of bright color and strong fragrance. For ideas on what to plant, read books including nature guides, study seed catalogs, and visit natural history museums. Explore as many public and private gardens as you can. Try to think like a butterfly. Don't be afraid to ask for advice from family and friends. Make a list of flowers you'd like to plant, then visit a garden center. Read labels. Make sure the flowers on your list will grow in your area. Note how tall the flowers grow and when they will bloom. Try to plant flowers with varied heights and flowering cycles. Then make your selections and plant your butterfly garden. When the flowers start to bloom, keep your eyes open and wait for wings. If you're lucky enough to have a butterfly visit your garden, stand quietly and enjoy its beauty. This book is dedicated to all those who help things grow. And that is the end of Waiting for Wings, written and illustrated by Lois Ellert. So this is day three of caterpillars growing and I can't wait to show you. You can see these caterpillars are probably, I would say, twice the size. They've grown to be twice the size as they were when I first received them in the mail two days ago. So it's amazing to me how quickly they grow. They've really gotten into the food as you can see. And can you see there's lots of strands of the silk that they've been spinning. And it's, it's quite interesting when they're sleeping, they, they line themselves perpendicular, straight up and down, kind of like that one right there in the center. Oh, look at they're wiggling. Um, right straight up and down all along the, the jar. So it looks like there's a bunch of lowercase L's in my little plastic jar, but they're having a good old time eating and growing. And I'm so happy that they're all being well fed and growing so nicely. This is exciting. Ooh, there's one. He's crawling along the, the jar. All insects and, and butterflies are insects. They start as an egg. And when they hatch from the egg, um, that is the first stage of growth. And that's when they're caterpillars and grown enough. They form the pupa stage and that's the chrysalis. So it goes from egg to caterpillar to chrysalis and then to adult butterfly. And all insects have very similar stages of growth. So it's pretty, pretty amazing Put my hand behind. You can see my thumb yep, next to that caterpillar. Oh, they're all lining up. They're all starting to line up. They are so funny. You can see the, it's a good picture right there of the uh, silk. They it just, they spin it every now and then and it just, it stays. Oh, there's a piece of silk right there. You can see it. That one caterpillar just spun it. It's attached to the side of the jar 
And you can see it's coming right out of the little spinnerets at the back end of the caterpillar. Pretty amazing. So that's it for day three of caterpillars. I hope you're enjoying this. I certainly am. I can't wait till these caterpillars progress further. And I'm hoping that we can see sometime them really sloughing off that. I mean, you can see those little kind of black things. That's basically the skin that they've shed. So anyway, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens with our caterpillars um, on day four. So stay tuned to watch these amazing critters that God has created, all part of God's plan. The first poem I have for you today, boys and girls, is called Fuzzy Wuzzy Caterpillar by Lillian Schultz. Fuzzy Wuzzy Caterpillar. Fuzzy Wuzzy Creepy Crawly Caterpillar Funny. You will be a butterfly when the days are sunny. Winging, flinging, dancing, springing, butterfly so yellow. You were once a caterpillar, wiggly, wiggly fellow. By Lillian Schultz. Okay, everyone, day four of caterpillars to butterflies. And check this out. This is amazing to me. These are now the caterpillars. They are a little quiet tonight, today. But look, they're crawling up on the lid underneath. There's four of them up there. One is kind of, two of them are kind of dangling down. And the other two are sort of lazy today, but they are fat. They're not very active. There's five of them crawling up at the top and two just sort of lazing their way. One of them is eating, it looks like, but they are fat, getting so fat. And we'll see. I'm not sure how many more days. Look at that, how long they are. Look at that one's moving, crawling down. Looks like he's going to go get some food. Yep. Pretty amazing. Just like watching them. Very busy today. Look, that one is, he's gonna feed. He's feeding, he's eating. Chomp, chomp. <laughs> he's finding food on the side as well. But they are, they're so fat today, I can't believe it. So we'll see what happens in the next few days. They are very wiggly today, having fun. This is exciting. So we'll see what happens in the next coming days of our caterpillars to butterflies. Now there they are, the caterpillars to butterfly. So this is day four and I just happened to check on these caterpillars and there are four of them that are actually hanging from the top of this plastic jar on the lid. I don't know if you can see. There's a good picture of it. Just like that. Pretty amazing. And I'm not sure if they're just doing a test run or if in the morning when I get up, they will be in the chrysalis. I'm not sure, but I just wanted to get a picture of that so that you all could see. It's pretty spectacular. I'm excited. I'm about to see some changes in our caterpillars. So again, this is just a little later in the evening on day four. I've been trying to video everything about the same time every day, like two o'clock in the afternoon every day, because that's when I first received them was two o'clock in the afternoon. So 
we're looking at these beautiful caterpillars. We'll see if tomorrow morning when I get up, we don't have chrysalises. Anyway, until a little bit later, probably tomorrow morning, we'll check again. The second book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called Life Cycles, The Butterfly. This is nonfiction, all informational text, facts about the life cycle of the butterfly, specifically the monarch butterfly. I know you're going to find this fascinating and informative. I hope you enjoy The Butterfly. Life Cycles, The Butterfly. Life Cycles, The Butterfly. Life Cycles, The Butterfly by Sabrina Crew, Rain Tree Steck Fawn Publishers. The eggs are on the leaf. These are the eggs of a butterfly. They have been laid on the leaf of a plant. The eggs are very tiny. And this shows the actual size of the eggs, but um, in filming the book, that may not be, look like the actual size. So the actual size of one of these eggs is about one millimeter, very tiny. The egg is opening. Four days have passed. Something is nibbling through the eggshell. It is a caterpillar. The caterpillars have hatched. The caterpillars are very small when they come out of their eggs. They are eating their eggshells. This is the caterpillar's first food. And this shows the actual size of the caterpillars. They the, the, it's going to be kind of distorted, I think, in, in filming the book. So um, just for your point of reference, the caterpillars, they, they um, photograph them right next to their eggs. So it's kind of hard to really see. That's not the egg right there is not part of the caterpillar. And they're really only about four millimeters long. They're really small. The caterpillar is eating leaves. Caterpillar grows fast. Now it has started to feed on plants. The caterpillar is shedding its skin. The caterpillar has grown too big for its skin. The skin splits when it becomes too tight. Underneath, the caterpillar has new, looser skin. Its stripes are very colorful. The caterpillar has many legs. The caterpillar uses its 10 back legs to move around. The tiny hooks on its legs help the caterpillar hold on to plants. The caterpillar's six front legs help it feed. The caterpillar is in danger. The caterpillar has many predators, but its marks warn predators that the caterpillar tastes bad. They can save the caterpillar from being eaten. The caterpillar is fully grown. The caterpillar is 18 days old. It has shed its skin four times. Now the caterpillar fastens its tail end to a plant. The caterpillar is changing. The caterpillar's skin is splitting again. It doesn't look like a caterpillar anymore. The caterpillar is in the pupa stage. Now a chrysalis has formed. At first, the skin of the chrysalis is soft, but it soon hardens. The chrysalis has tiny holes to let air in and out. Inside, the creature is completely changing its shape. There is a new creature. This is the chrysalis two weeks later. You can see the creature inside. It is ready to come out. The chrysalis has split. A butterfly is crawling out. The butterfly has grown wings and antennae. Now it has only three pairs of legs. The butterfly dries its wings. When the butterfly first appears, its wings are damp and crumpled. When blood pumps into their veins, the wings stretch. Then the butterfly dries its wings in the sunshine. The butterfly's wings are covered with scales. The butterfly has two wings on each side of its body. The wings are covered with tiny scales. 
The scales give the butterfly its beautiful colors. The colors warn predators that a butterfly tastes bad. The butterfly is looking for food. The butterfly has flown onto a flower. It is feeding on the nectar inside the flower. The butterfly collects the nectar with its proboscis. Butterflies love the sunshine. Butterflies fly mostly on sunny days. They like to live in warm places. When it gets colder in the fall, the butterflies migrate to warmer places. The butterflies have migrated. The butterflies have flown a long way from their summer home. They have all gathered in the same place. Sometimes the butterflies cover a whole tree. And you can kind of see a close-up view of this trunk and there's lots of butterflies resting on the trunk and all these darker kind of brownish looking places on the trees. You can see the green and then you can see the, the darker kind of brownish color. Those are all monarch butterflies. Spring has come. The butterflies spend much of the winter asleep on the leaves and branches of trees. When spring comes, the butterflies migrate again. They are leaving their winter home. The butterflies are ready to mate. The butterflies have mating smells in their wings. The male and female butterflies find each other by their mating smells. The female butterfly lays her eggs. The male and female butterflies have mated to fertilize the female's eggs. The female butterfly has found a safe place to lay her eggs. Soon she will fly away and leave the eggs to hatch on their own. Butterflies need wild places. Butterflies need places with wildflowers that have nectar. They need the right kinds of plants on which to lay their eggs. People can help butterflies by keeping wild places safe for them. Parts of a butterfly. Butterflies are insects. All insects have three parts to their bodies. These are the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. All adult insects have six legs. Insects such as butterflies and moths have wings and can fly. So here's the wings covered in tiny scales. There's one wing and then the other wing on the opposite. You don't see the, the lower wing of this butterfly, but there's another one on the other side of its body. The thorax is the middle part of the body, right here behind the head. The abdomen is the rear part of the body, and you can just see the tip of the abdomen. It's the largest of the three body parts. These are the antennae. One antenna, two antennae. Antennae is plural for antenna. It's used to smell and sense things around, around them, around the butterfly. Here's the head. The head is the front part of the body. The proboscis or proboscis, both pronunciations are correct, is used for sucking nectar and it's rolled up when it's not feeding and it's usually rolled up inside of the butterfly and you don't see it. And then when it stretches it out, that's when you see the proboscis. This is the eye. It's called a compound eye and they have two of them, two compound eyes made of hundreds of tiny eyes that each see part of the whole picture. And these are the feet of the butterfly used to walk and to taste plants before eating them or laying their eggs on them. And all um, monarch butterflies will lay their eggs on milk thistle plants the leaves of the milk thistle plant because that's what their, ca their caterpillars or the larvae eat. And all butterflies, depending on what the caterpillar eats, a different type of caterpillar will lay its egg on a different type of plant. So, and they use their feet to taste what they're going to eat and also where they're going to lay their eggs. It's pretty amazing. Other butterflies. The butterfly in this book is a monarch butterfly. Here are some other butterflies from all over the world. This is a Queen Alexandra's 
birdwing from Southeast Asia. The female is the world's largest butterfly and it can be as big as 11 inches across or 28 centimeters. And that's about from here to here on this book. It's, it's, it's big, it's probably as big as a bird. That's probably why it has its name, the Queen Alexandra's bird wing, because it's a, it's a big butterfly. This is the Adonis blue found in Europe. The Apollo also found in Europe. A marbled white also found in Europe. This is a long tailed skipper found in North America. So it'll be found in the United States and probably Canada. Uh, this is a red admiral in the Northern hemisphere. So this, this butterfly will be found um, north of the equator in lots of different countries, uh, United States, Europe, could be found in um, Canada, China. As long as it's north of the equator, you're going to find the Red Admiral. You will not find it in Australia because Australia is in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, this is the Australian beak and it's found in Australia. It's beautiful. It's got purplish color. And this is the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail found in North America. where the monarch butterfly lives. So if you look at the, this map, this is Mexico and United States, Canada and Alaska. And this darker green um, area on the map are areas where the monarch butterfly lives. So monarch butterflies live um, from Central America all the way up through Mexico and the United States and Southern Canada. And the arrows, the red arrows, show the migratory routes of the monarch butterfly. So all the way from Baja California, Mexico, all the way up to Oregon and Washington, from Mexico up to southern Canada, Mexico to central um, southern Canada, and then over the Great Lakes as well in, in the United States. Here's from Mexico all the way up to southern Canada, through the Great Lakes region. And then this is probably Louisiana, um, Mississippi, all the way up to Southern Canada and from Florida, all the way up the Eastern seaboard of the United States to um, Maine, which is a state that's um, at furthest north on the Eastern seaboard, all the way to Southern Canada. So lots of migratory routes for the monarch butterflies in all over the United States, so it's pretty cool. This is the glossary. Uh, lists all these wonderful vocabulary words that you're gonna find in the story. The abdomen, the rear part of the insect's body, antennae, the feelers on the insect's head used to sense things around them, touch and smell. Caterpillar, the larva of a butterfly, the growing stage before it turns into a pupa. Chrysalis, the pupa of a butterfly, the stage where it rests and changes into an adult, fertilize to make a female's eggs able to produce babies, migrate to move from one place to another when the season changes. The nectar is the sweet liquid made by flowers to attract insects. Predator, an animal that hunts and kills other animals for food. Proboscis or proboscis, a tube-shaped mouth used to suck nectar from flowers, pupa, the stage where an insect rests and changes into an adult, thorax, the middle part of an insect's body. And here's the index and all these different topics um, are listed and you can find them on the page number that's listed next to them. And that is the end of Life Cycles, the butterfly. To show you that we have four chrysalises hanging. Remember last night I showed you there were four caterpillars that were dangling from the underside of the lid. And this morning there are four chrysalises now dangling. And one of them, you get a good look, you can see that the final skin, oh, they're wiggling. That's not me. That's not me. That's, I'm holding the jar very still. That 
is the butterflies. They're all moving inside. They do that from time to time. But you can see this one, the final skin, the one right there in the center of the frame, um, the final skin split and got stuck at the top of the chrysalis, so it's still there. And unless it falls off, um, it'll be there. But yesterday, the, there were four of the caterpillars that were um, all the way up on the underside of the lid, and they just stayed there all day until last night, and then they started hanging. And I'm pretty sure that's, gonna, that's what's going to happen with the three that are up there right now. So it's pretty exciting. Pretty exciting. And on the bottom, you can see there's two big lumps of skin from, I don't know if I can get a good shot of it, but that's what that is. It's the sloughed off, the final skin that was sloughed off by um, the caterpillars. Oh my gosh, that one's really going to town. It's, he's just wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. So I'm going to set them down because I think they, they would like to have a little peace and quiet. And this is so exciting because this is the, now it's just a waiting game. We just have to wait until they decide to emerge. And that takes about another five days. So hello everybody, this is day five of Caterpillars to Butterflies. And I just want to show you that earlier today, there were three caterpillars just crawling on the underside of the lid. And now they're all dangling. And they're going to form their chrysalises. And look at how beautiful that's got like gold flecks on it. Yeah, I'm wondering if you can really see that. It look, just looks amazing to me. Unfortunately, as you saw earlier um, this morning, I was so excited. Those chrysalises, those were the butterflies inside were very active. And one, I'm afraid, shook itself down and it fell onto the food. So when I transfer all of these, oh my goodness, they're so wiggly. Look at that. I'm holding the camera very still and the jar very still. And they're all just so wiggly. So. There are three more caterpillars starting to shed their very last skin and then the chrysalis will form. And inside the chrysalis, a huge transformation, it's called metamorphosis, will occur. And that's the change between caterpillar and butterfly. The second poem I'm reading is called Polly Saw a Butterfly by Jack Prelutsky. Polly Saw a Butterfly. Polly saw a butterfly that fluttered in the air. It seemed to be enchanted as it fluttered here and there. It fluttered by the hollyhocks. It fluttered by a rose. It fluttered up to Polly's face and tickled Polly's nose by Jack Prelutsky. So hello everybody, it's day six of Caterpillars to Butterflies and I've got something special to show you. You can see that the jar is empty now. It, all that's left in the jar are pieces of skin from the last time the caterpillars molted or shed their skin. And now there is the six chrysalises hanging in the butterfly habitat. So that's what that says right there. Butterfly pavilion. So that's what this is called. And that's where the butterflies 
hopefully will emerge. And you can see the one chrysalis, it's right on that butterfly, kind of just laying right on top of it. But the others are hanging, the six are now hanging from the side. One of them is sticking straight out, it's kind of funny. The other five are just dangling and they'll be there for about, hmm, I'm thinking another five days. So we'll just take a, a picture of them. If something changes, I'll definitely film it. But I just pinned it with that big old pin and there they are. So they're not very active right now, I think because I just put them in but in a little bit, they'll probably be shaking and wiggling around in there. That's what they do. So I have to get their food ready for when they do emerge because they will be hungry. Anyway, so the next time you see them, if things don't change, will probably be when they start emerging from their chrysalises. Anyway, I love you. God's good. He creates beautiful things, especially you. Hey everyone, this is day 11 of Caterpillars to Butterflies and we have butterflies today. I am so excited to show you. Look at this. This is amazing. If you look, there is actually a butterfly just emerging from that chrysalis and there are three already emerged. There's one right there that came out of one of those empty chrysalises. And there's another one right, oh, he's fluttering. He's right there. And they're exercising their wings. And then I have one more that is right there. And you can see on the floor of the butterfly pavilion, right on that yellow flower, that's like a daffodil, is the empty chrysalis. So the one that was, that had fallen off of its perch because it was so wiggly. And then there's the fourth one that's coming out right there. It's pretty amazing. I'm about to lose battery, so I'm gonna go, but this is exciting. See you next time, bye. I wanted to get a picture of the butterflies. They're flapping their wings, opening them and closing them. And you can really see how beautiful they are. There he goes again. They're, I think they do that to help. They pump the blood through their wings and I think their wings are a little wet when they come out and they do that to fan them and get them dry. Oh, there it goes again. Oh, that's so cool. So the netting on this butterfly pavilion is a very fine woven white mesh. So that's why the pictures, when I'm filming them through the, the netting, why it's not a clear picture. And what you see you know, behind the butterflies is different things in my office. So there they go. That's so cool. I could watch these for uh, forever. These beautiful butterflies, these painted lady butterflies, I could watch them forever. But I have other things I have to do. So I'm hoping you're enjoying this as much as I am. Bye for now. The third book I'm reading today, boys and girls, is called The Butterfly Hunt, written and illustrated by Yoshi. It's a story about a boy who is surprised by a butterfly and wants to keep it for his very own. He wants to have it as a pet. Can you have a butterfly for a pet? Should you keep a butterfly for a pet? We'll find out in this delightful story, The Butterfly Hunt. The Butterfly Hunt, written and illustrated by Yoshi.
to Habiki and Miki with my love. The Butterfly Hunt, written and illustrated by Yoshi. Picture Book Studio. Once there was a boy. who was surprised by a butterfly. He wanted to capture the butterfly and make it his very own. The boy thought, I will do anything to make him mine. Anything. I will take him home and keep him for my pet. If I am very quiet and very careful. He will be mine! Once there was a boy who was surprised by a butterfly. He captured the butterfly and then... He set it free. And forever and ever, the butterfly was his very own. And that is the end of The Butterfly Hunt, written and illustrated by Yoshi. Hello everyone. This is exciting. As you can see, we have a lot more butterflies. That one is getting some exercise right there. Climbing up the screen. And if we come around over to this side, we have up at the top right there, a newly emerged butterfly. And he has a lot of the extra liquid. Um, the extra liquid that is called meconium that is just, they have it when they're, oh, this one is active today. And there's another one up there that's newly emerged as well. But unfortunately, there's one more that is going to emerge. And the one that I thought was emerging did not successfully come out. I'm not sure what happened to him, but that little butterfly didn't make it. So out of the seven, we have six and we have, we have a couple that are very active this morning. Yeah, you can see the underside of the wings right there. There's a little bit of orange and red and yellow, but mostly brown. And that's to blend in with the surroundings. But the thing about the painted ladies, they are bright and they look like, they look a lot like a monarch, but they, are different. There's another butterfly that looks quite a bit like it too, and that's a viceroy. That one's just relaxing. Its wings are folded back above its head. And you can see the long antennas with the little balls on the end. That's how you can tell it's a butterfly and not a moth. So, but they're feeding and they're doing a good job. Let's see if I can yeah. X 
exercising its wings. Oh, that one's crawling up. That's the underside. This is so much fun. I'm really enjoying this whole process. That one's just newly emerged, so it's resting, pumping blood into its wings. And then that one too. So there are six now, or five fully emerged, and one more to go. So I'll see what activity I can find tomorrow or perhaps later today. That would be fun. This one's a little camera shy. Oh, look, okay, he's doing good now. Those beautiful symmetrical wings. Perfect. Beautiful. So tomorrow, I will let them go. I'm really excited. So be blessed, everybody. Love you. Fluttering all over the place. Ooh, look at flutter, flutter, flutter. Yep. There's not a lot of room for them to fly inside the pavilion. That's why I want to let them go as soon as possible so they can be free and live their full life to mate and lay eggs and start the whole process all over again. All right, until later. Bye-bye. Bye, butterfly. Okay, everybody, so this is the butterfly pavilion. I've put it outside and you can, I don't know if you can see, the butterflies are, oh, they're fluttering, fluttering, fluttering in there. This is my courtyard and in my courtyard I have a big butterfly bush right there. You can hear the fountain, I'm sure, in the background. And there's a wall and then I've got these really, really nice bushes up leading to the front and then I just planted yesterday these zinnias that butterflies are supposed to like as well so I'm excited there's a Brazilian sky tree they like hummingbirds like that plant but pretty much there's a lot of uh, shrubs and bushes and things that the butterflies will like so I'm just going to unzip it oh they're really restless they're liking the sunshine today so I'm going to See if I can unzip this top. There's a zipper right there on the top, as you can see. So I gotta set the camera down for a second and unzip it. Ooh, there's one that just. Yeah, there's another one right there. So, oh, there it went. I don't know if I can catch this last one because that was, there's two left in there, two left. Sometimes the butterfly pavilion falls over with the wind. Oh, here comes another one, ready to go. I don't know if we'll be able to get it or not, we'll see. They're being shy right now. There's one right there on the top. And there's another one right in there. So hopefully the last two will go. When they decide to take off, they go so quickly. So we'll see. But we'll let them go. That one is... They're still on the inside of the pavilion, so these are a little shy. If I reach my hand in, maybe I can... Oh, there. So watch. Oh, there it goes. Oh, they both went. They're both gone. Woo! I couldn't catch them. That was pretty cool. So the butterflies, oh, look it. There's one right there. They're, they're fluttering on the breeze. But now the pavilion is empty, so no more butterflies. And until next spring, when I'll get some more.
that's all for now. Bye bye butterfly. Thank you so much for joining me today, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed all the stories and poems about butterflies. And I especially hope that you had fun watching my little video diary from caterpillar to butterfly. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, you can do so. Just tap the word subscribe right there and be sure to hit the notification bell to be notified of all the latest videos with stories and poems from Reading with Mrs. Adams. And don't forget to check out my website, readingwithmrsadams.com. One truth I want you always to remember, boys and girls, and that is that God loves you so much. So dare to dream the impossible because all things are possible with God. I love you. Until next time, goodbye.